bonus episode. So these weapon build videos aren't really a part of the Dark Tide build series. I mean, they're from Dark Tide, but they're kind of their own thing. So let's consider this video to be a conclusion of those three weapon build videos. You've been seeing them in the background for a while now. So at the end of this video, I'll pull each one down and we'll talk about them in depth. Also, I'm missing a lot of build video from this, so this might be a short one. Before paint, I wanted to add a few more details. Each weapon in game has a mounting hook for trinkets that you can earn and put on. I wanted to put that on here in the off chance that I wanted to 3D print a trinket for the sword. I carved out a circle for one of my old roller skate bearings, started working on an internal mechanism to hold it all together and allow it to spin. This would comprise of a wheel bearing spacer, a circular piece of plastic from I don't remember where, a wheel bearing, and a bottle cap. The bearing spacer came first. I carved out a notch for it and glued it into the foam. I then secured it in place with a circular piece of plastic. This piece also seconds as a smooth surface for the bearing to rub against. This will later get a thin layer of bearing grease for any contact issues. I then needed to trim the bottle cap so that its ends did not overextend the wheel bearing. This would glue to the outside edge of the wheel bearing. Wheel bearings are meant to stay stationary at the center hub, and this is where I'll be gluing it to the bearing spacer. This all together will allow the bottle cap on top to stay on and spin freely. With that all figured out, the bottle cap would then act as a mounting surface for the actual trinket hook. This included some EVA foam, a plastic cylinder, and a keychain hook. And with that all assembled, I glued the bearing down onto the bearing spacer. This took a few tries because I originally went a little overboard on the oil and grease inside, which wasn't allowing the bearing to glue to the spacer. But eventually I got it on, moved on to the next detail. I flipped the sword over, and I needed to carve out a chunk of the side plating. There was an exposed mechanical bit on this side that I had originally skipped in my previous build video. I wanted all the details, so I carved that section out and started working on making the little gears that go inside. And with that cut out, I gave them a coat of contact cement, pressed them all inside. I then added additional rivet marks that I had missed before, using the edge of my Dremel bit. Then I started working on the trigger. This was just a single piece of 10mm foam, cut and sanded the shape. And with that all done, I placed the contact cement and glued it in place. Fun fact, because this is just foam, you can actually pull the trigger and it bounces back when you let go. And finally, one last thing before moving on to getting ready for paint, and that's to weather the weapons. I started by cutting out all the nicks and cracks in the blade on the plasma gun, getting as close to what I could see in game. I then moved into the force sword, where again, I tried to match all the scratches, nicks, as closely as I could get to the in-game reference. And then it was finally time to seal everything to get ready for paint. I put in some gloves, got my quick seal and a cup of water, and 
just went crazy. My main target was all the seams in the foam, but I still got it everywhere because this method is just faster. I had taken everything outside to prime using Plasti Dip as my primer. For my first coat of paint, everything was given a layer of metallic black. And for color, I started first with the chainsaw. My first coat of color was a base coat of metallic silver for everything that was metal. Even if it was getting another color on top, if it was metal, it caught silver first, just to make everything easier. I used a dry brush technique for this, only hitting the high points with light strokes with minimal paint on the brush. The idea wasn't to lay the paint on, but to give it a weathered metal look. This means I didn't try to fill in any corners or cracks, easy to reach spots where dirt and grime wouldn't sit. My first coat of color was this matte Tuscan Teal by Apple Barrel. I wanted it to look worn, so I gave it several splotchy passes in hopes that some of the spots might be more layered than others, like it had been painted several times over the years of wear and tear. My first pass was with a thick brush, and my second pass used a sponge brush. And then I gave it one more pass again with another sponge brush. After that, I had previously used some heavy yarn to weave a grip on the handle. This is white yarn, however, and I needed it to be red. So I took some watered down red paint and gave her several passes to really let it soak into those threads.
This took a long time to dry, so in the meantime, I let it sit while I moved on to the next piece. Up next was the plasma gun. This didn't have many colors, so the base metallic silver made up the majority of its paint. This was the same dry brushing technique as before, leaving every crack and seam untouched, since that's where dirt and grime would naturally build up from usual wear and tear. Up next was a coat of gold on some of the accents. This was another metallic paint, and the same brand as the silver. I also painted the chaos arrows around the barrel. I also used some red acrylic paint to try and do a blood splatter effect, which didn't turn out that noticeable. I used another method later that I don't have footage for now, which I'll mention at the end of this video. And last but not least, the four sword. Apparently lost more footage here as well, but as you can see, I already laid down silver, gold, and brown for the hand grip. When I do have footage though, is the skull being painted. I started out with a deep dark red as the base and gave her several passes of lighter and lighter reds, browns, and oranges. And from there, I kept bringing those colors closer to the surface, bringing those reds, browns, and oranges closer to bone colors with each pass. Each pass getting lighter and lighter, only hitting the highest spots. And then finally, I used a chalked up sponge brush and some watered down red paint and started laying down splotches for the blood stain, focusing on specific regions like the chaos areas in the back and the openings in the top and bottom of the skull. And the weapons are all done, so let's pull them down and take a look at them all. Start with this one first. Um, this is the most basic of them all. So what all can we talk about now that this is done? Um, some things I'm probably gonna be mentioning from the individual build videos, just because I forget what I even said back then. Um, but we have our cool little skull chaos spike end to do some poking. Um, we also have our skull painted as well. 
Let's see, this was the second skull I had painted, the original first skull. That got me the idea to do this was when I painted this guy, like, who was that? This was like not even a month after Dark Tide came out when I made the Stat Interrogator. Um, I have a build video on this. Um, I used just like some random Halloween skulls that I had and I was like, I want to make something because I had like a free month to build something and that's what I did. But anyway, um, that was the first time I had painted a skull. Um, I'd also done the same thing with the foam clay and stuff like that just to kind of bulk it up a little bit because it was a tiny little skull. But the paint job in the back turned out pretty decent. Um, it's not perfect. I kind of perfected it later with the skulls on the hip, um, which I will cover in another episode. Um, let's see, anything else worth mentioning? Um, I'll also, um, <laughs> if you see um, the, the pieces of foam I have here, um, they're just for mounting purposes up on the hooks. That way the hooks don't dig into the foam of the sword. It just, I have all my weapons kind of mounted like this. I have a little block of foam and it's just shoved there where it's going to sit on the hooks on the wall. That way it doesn't hurt the weapon. Um, another thing that I did not have video for, which I'll show more when I grab the next weapon, is all this red on the blade. Um, I will explain it a little better after this. <laughs> Actually, I should probably go grab that too. So, be right back. Okay, we'll talk about this and then that blood. So now we can see the LEDs a little better. Very bright red. Kind of overwhelming for the camera actually. So, unfortunately, I think I had to do this on the build video for this as well. Okay, now we can see. So as you can see on the blade, try and get it in light. There is a lot of like fake blood and it has texture to it. Um, I originally discovered this technique when I was doing my shredder video. Uh, one of my shredder videos, most likely the last one because I've been painting, but worth checking out. I highly recommend. So anyway, these are wax sticks for a hot glue gun. Um, I thought it would be a cool idea to make fake blood with it. So I had put it in the cock glue gun, tapped the uh, gun as it's dripped on the weapon or on the armor, and it made this really cool blood splatter effect. And I've been using this idea ever since. Um, so as you can see, probably not, there is a very cool blood splatter on the blade. Um, same with the blade on the sword. Um, same thing. Uh, hot glue, wax sticks. Um, I've mentioned this several times in other videos. Um, this stuff, even though it's for a hot glue gun, it is not a substitute for hot glue. Um, don't try and bond anything with it. It will not hold. It's just wax. Um, anything else? Uh, I don't have this light on. I did show this in the original video as well. So these are just like Halloween finger lights. Um, I must have left it on because now it's dead. <laughs> it's okay. I have like 20 of these. Um, I bought a bunch of them because for some reason I was doing something green at one, one year and these were, came in like packs of five because they're for like kids I guess but I believe 
they're supposed to fit on your fingers like that and you turn them on and then uh wherever you point your finger like a little led in the front and it just kind of yeah but i thought I'd, i bought a handful of them because i thought well halloween's the best time to buy any kind of leds especially in the orange and green variety <laughs> so i bought these just for the heck of it then i might be able to find a use for them at some point they were insanely cheap walmart halloween stuff's usually pretty cheap and the way this worked then was that i would just put it in here put this cap back on and then it would light up the thing actually you know what i'm gonna go get a new one <sighs> see how easy this is to swap out so it goes inside i accidentally turned it off in the process and then in the back it lights up the little energy readout thingy it's pretty cool and i just throw the cap back on it's good to go i kind of just leave it inside because that way i don't lose it um anything else worth mentioning um, with this weapon at least um, <laughs> this is its default setting I have to use a remote to make it stay solid uh, but also the front of the barrel also lights up red so that's pretty cool as far as paint job goes, this was the easiest of them all because it's mostly just metallic silver. Um, yeah, a little bit of gold. The uh, chaos arrows that I had drawn around here, um, they're pretty accurate to how it is in the game. I wish I could have done them nicer, but there's not that really much room to do anything with them. <sighs> but that said, let's get our last weapon the nice one <sighs> this is my favorite of the three the sword is my least favorite, this is my most favorite, and the plasma gun is a very close second. But this one, this one takes the cake. So let's see some extra details you are not going to be able to see actually inside all of the um, little gears and stuff that I had put in there. Um, I had done the same with the blood on these spikes, or on the uh, chain blades. Um, as far as I'm aware from, actually I'm very aware, um, I use the in-game weapon viewer, yeah, the Imperium logo for the uh, little double-headed eagle is only on one side. Um, when you're playing the game, that side is what's facing you. So it's always in your view, reminding you that the Emperor protects. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. So the little trinket thingy that I was talking about. Um, and it's gonna be hard to get this whole thing in view. But yes, it spins freely. Kind of. Um, it's a little rough, like right there. But everywhere else it spins pretty good. Um, if I was to have a trinket on there, print something out, it would, um, a gravity would be enough to make it spin. Um, I guess I must have forgotten to record wrapping this as well. Um, I'm not even sure how I got the idea to do it. Um, I want to say it was just a ton of contact cement. I think I lathered this entire area, or I did it as I went. I dug in one spot in the front, worked my whole way down, and then just started wrapping. And I don't think I got the uh, the thread wet with contact cement. I just did the surface so wherever it went, it soaked in. And I think I did it wet so that it had room to actually soak in and then fully grab. Um, 
and then one of these sides, I think it was, I think it was the bottom. Um, it's going to be hard to see, but then I just kind of shoved it right back into the handle of the of the sword because the handle has has a layer of foam around the actual PVC pipe. Um, another neat thing is that it's not supposed to look like an actual working trigger, but it does have a little play. So if you want to actually hold on to it, you can. Um, the other thing I did not seem to remember to do or forgot to uh, record as well was also the weathering. So after I did all the painting and before I did all the blood splatter, um, I went through and kind of did like a black wash on it. So I took like a uh, like a really watered down black acrylic and I just started getting every corner and seam. And then I would take a paper towel and I would just wipe off the excess, hoping that everything would just kind of stay in those spots. Kind of make it look like dirt and grime had uh, built up there. It worked for the most part. Um, up close, it doesn't look that pretty, but I mean, even from here away, you can see like around like the crest, like it, you can see like the buildup of dirt almost around it. Like it's been worn and used and been through enough battle and only gotten like a nice quick clean then back out in the battlefield. Um, so yeah, so from a decent distance away, I think it looks amazing. This is by far my favorite prop that I have made so far to this day. Um, I had made it to scale for her, for her zealot costume, which will come after my scab captain build, <sighs> which I have not even planned out that yet. Um, I will give a spoiler alert though, if you are following along with all of these in release order, that her build is going to be missing a lot of footage. So I might try and condense the entire thing down to one. Reason being is because that last like two weeks of build was insanely hectic. So I was more or less focusing on getting everything done rather than setting up the cameras, making sure I got it, you know, that kind of thing. But we will see what it actually turns out to be in the end, video wise. But I'm rambling like I always do, so we will conclude this episode. I'll see you in the next one.